At this point, I've been doing this for about 10 years. There was a reason why people kept asking for my help. I knew that I was offering something different to a community of people that weren't accounted for. My name is Monica Prada, and I am a feminine image consultant. What it means to be a feminine image consultant is that I help individuals who are transgender go from male to females. I work with them on teaching everything from feminizing makeup lessons, wardrobe styling, consulting with different plastic surgeons, um, just the whole gamut of femininity and walking them through that process. To do with you. For the most part, my clients are between the ages of 30 and 50. They're usually Caucasian executives a lot of the times, a lot of doctors, a lot of scientists, a lot of architects. Today, we're gonna meet with my client from Boston. Her name is Julia. She is a scientist. That's cute. I actually really like it. And then you can do your navy. Next week, on Monday, she is going back to work full time as a woman. It's really essential that she have a work wardrobe. I work in a lab, and so I want something that's functional in the lab, um, but also very feminine. Okay, so that cardigan is too long. Your sweater game is weak. So typically, when I have my clients staying at the same workplace, I advise them to try to stay within the kind of palette that they were in when they were still a man. Okay. The butt looks really good in these, though. So if they wore a lot of greens and a lot of blues and a lot of grays, stick with that. But we can do the feminine version. That's a lot cuter. It's very casual looking. And then now throw on the black cardigan, and let me see if it looks any different. So we're really gonna work on creating a wardrobe that feels comfortable for her, still feels like Julia in the colors that she likes, but is the feminized version of everything that she was wearing before. Beautiful. So yeah, I really think that this is something that you can wear to work, mm -hmm. which I think is great. Yeah. Do you feel like other women in the office are dressing similarly to this? And my clients that come to me, understandably, their goal is to just be invisible, right? Like be one of the girls, like only be trans if they want to share that story with people. And that was a new photo. That's cute. I just sent last night. Nice. So yesterday, Julia came out on Facebook. I just kind of wrote a personal note saying, you know, I've got a, a significant event in my life that I would like to update everyone on. And then just launched into saying that I'm transgender, I'm transitioning. Use, really awesome. Use my preferred name and uh, female pronouns. That's about it. So short and kind of sweet, but um, the response was wonderful. So much love. I love everybody is like, I love the curls. I know. <laughs> My work in the transgender community really began with makeup. I started when I was 18 as a makeup artist at Matt Cosmetics. And I kept meeting individuals who were presenting um, either fully like transgender women or people that were coming in still as men and asking to have help. And I would have this experience where other makeup artists, they were a little bit uncomfortable with that idea. So they had to go on break, they had to answer calls, like they had to do something else. For somebody to come and say what they want and express themselves and to kind of be ignored or disregarded, like their desire isn't as great as the desire of the woman that that same makeup artist was just talking to is really, an uncomfortable and disappointing thing to watch. And so after seeing that a handful of times, I really decided to dedicate myself to learning how to feminize faces. You know, if you're watching these contour videos, it'll show you to contour underneath, but that's not the truth. If you wanna feminize your face, you really wanna go on the jaw itself. Our idea is better to look more natural and show some of the natural imperfections, even if that means like a little bit of tiny beard shadow right now, like that's okay. Are you excited for Monday? I am. I said it's, 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 it's exciting and it's also really scary too. Um, because you're, you, even like going out, every, every time I step out of the apartment or the hotel, it's like my heart beats a little bit because it's like, I'm out in the world. <laughs> I'm doing this. 
it's the first time all of my colleagues and friends at work will see me like this. At the same time, it's, it's exciting because I can finally stop hiding, I can finally stop um, exerting all this mental energy on hiding. With Julia, a really big thing is that she has been growing out her nails. She's super excited and super happy about it. So we're gonna take a trip to the nail salon. And then when you go to the nail salon near you, mm -hmm. just keep asking for almond shape. Yeah. And if they don't know what almond shape nails are. No, just, just Google them. Okay. Yeah, just pull up photos. Perfect. Put yeah. okay. in a water, please. Ultimately, I don't believe that somebody should have to sit a certain way to be perceived as feminine or have certain facial features. I believe that if somebody says that they're a woman, like we should just accept them as that. Unfortunately, we don't live in that day and age yet. But I always tell them that the best way to go about it is to learn all these things, like what are the different social cues? How do women walk? How do women style themselves? What are these norms? Take that big picture and just make it your own. Okay, awesome. Oh, you're you're ready, <laughs> sleep. I know, she's so skinny. Oh, so All good. Right. <laughs> what do you eat? <laughs> just juice, she only just eats juice. juice. That's what she eats. The last time I saw Monica, it was a very emotional time because it was like I was so close, but at the end, I still had to go put my old clothes on. I had to go get on a train. I had to go back up to Boston, and it was just, it was awful emotionally because I'd had this wonderful, affirming two days, and it's like, you know, I'm doing this. I've got this, like, you know, we have the beginning of an aesthetic. I'm getting my makeup down. I've got a wonderful haircut, and all of a sudden, I have to go back, and it's, it's awful. Now it's like, I don't have to go back. It's amazing. I get the most satisfaction as a feminine image consultant, seeing people look in the mirror and feeling happy, feeling connected to that reflection, feeling like they can go out into the world, feeling empowered, like they can be exactly who they know themselves to be, you know, regardless of where that falls on a scale of femininity. I get to give people something that, that they already had inside of them. And it's really cool to kind of help them find that gift and go out and share it with the world.